Hey, good evening. I'm Pastor Hal Johnson. For those who may be joining us for the first time, it's Wednesday night and we always have Word Wednesday on Wednesday night. Hey, I want to share with you um, a couple of things, but before I do that, let's have a word of prayer. Father, I thank you for this night and I pray for everyone who would be tuned in tonight, that your word would penetrate our hearts, that you, O oh God, would help us to live according to your divine plan. You said be holy because you're holy. That's the kind of lives that we want to live. I pray that your name would be glorified over everything that is said and everything that is done on this night. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I wanna say this, that I will not be teaching uh, Bible study tonight, however, uh, and I'll tell you why here in a minute, but Brother Victor is going to be coming and he's gonna be talking about the first of the names of God I uh, told you last week that this week we'll start studying the names of God. And the whole purpose behind that is that as you study the names of God, you understand something about the character of God. And when you understand something about the character of God, it builds trust in your prayer. For instance, when you know that he's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, when you know that he's El Shaddai, the almighty God, and you approach God from that perspective, it just makes a difference in your prayer life. And so I thank Spear for introducing that concept to us. And uh, each week we're gonna have a different minister or someone perhaps from Spear who's gonna be teaching on a certain name of God. Brother Victor will do that tonight. As for me, tonight while you're studying the Bible, I'm gonna be in a meeting with a group of pastors from uh, the Dallas Metroplex, pastors from uh, various churches, and we're going to be talking about this very important subject of racism. And it's just so important that we, the, especially the Christian community, get this thing right. Uh, if you've listened to my sermon, Guard Your Heart, uh, sometimes when you see all this kind of stuff going on, bitterness can begin to creep in your heart. And you got to pray because you don't want to start feeling bitter towards your white brothers, towards your black brothers. You don't want to start feeling bitter because when you start feeling bitter and then hatred can kick in and you don't want that to happen because then you become as bad as the hater. So uh, we'll be sitting down tonight, prominent pastors in the community, brother, uh, Pastor Brian Carter will be there from uh, Concord Baptist Church. Pastor Parker is gonna be there from, uh, what is the name of his church? Uh, uh, Golden Gate Baptist Church, and then there'll be some of my white brothers there from uh, Park City's Baptist Church, and I believe Prestonwood uh, uh, Baptist Church will be there. Um, other, a few other pastors will be there. So we're, we're gathering together, and we're gonna talk about this subject, heart to heart, amen, about racism, and just get to the root of it, and how we as a church can make a difference. As I stated earlier, if you listen to my sermon on uh, guard your heart, uh, a lot of times uh, the challenge that I have with my white evangelical brothers is that a lot of times we can speak out against um, homosexuality, we can speak out against uh, uh, same-sex marriage, we can speak out against abortion, but sometimes when it comes to this issue of racism and police brutality, the things that we're talking about now, we just tend to be silent. And that's what I don't understand, especially those who are able to exegete the scripture and have good sound theological background. I'm concerned that we don't come and just call it what it is. This was evil. This was police brutality. This was racist. And we need to start calling things exactly what they are. So pray for me tonight. And uh, you know, I'm normally just about uh, the great command and the great commission, love and go. But I think the times that we're living in really calls for these type of meetings. So you pray that the Lord will bless our time together with these other pastors. God bless you. Would you receive brother Victor North? God bless you. Well, hello, Christian Stronghold. Uh, Victor North here, and tonight we're going to be starting a study of the word, the names of God. I'm sorry, a study of the names of God out of the word of God. 
I will be starting it off uh, tonight, and there will be other ministers that will be following up. So let's pray, and we'll get into the Word of God. Father, we thank you for this day, for this hour, for this minute, for this very second in time. No matter what's going on in this world, no matter how we feel personally or emotionally or financially, in the middle of everything, our appropriate response to you is thank you. Thank you for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy. Thank you for your salvation. Illuminate us tonight in your word. Help us to be better than we are uh, right now. When we leave here, we'll be better than what we are when we came here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Okay, if you would, turn into your Bibles to Genesis chapter 13. And the name of God that we're going to be talking about tonight uh, is the Almighty God or the Omnipotent God, the All-Powerful God. And in the Hebrew, it is El Shaddai, God Almighty. So let's look at what the Word of God says again in Genesis chapter 17. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. And the Word of God says, And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. So God comes to Abraham, or Abram at this particular time, and he makes this awesome introduction, giving him his name, or his title, as it were. And I want to make three points, or share three points with you tonight. The first one is, what's in a name? What's in a title? Well, it tells you more than just the name of the person. It tells you more than who they are. That title tells you what they are able to do, why they're even there. And I want you to know this going in, everything that God does for us, everything that God gives us, everything that God says to us, the motivating factor behind it is his love for us. Everything that God does, he does it out of love. So he tells Abraham this title, he gives him this name, this title, as it were, that I am the almighty God. Well, what's in that? I, I like to uh, compare that to if, if you were to go to a fine dining establishment, a fine restaurant, and you sit down at the table, and then there's this person that comes up to you, and they make an introduction, and they tell you what their title is. And in that title, they tell you what they're there to do for you. They would say something like, good evening, my name is Bob, and I will be your server tonight. Well, Bob's not only just telling you his name, he's giving you his title, and in his title, he's telling you, what he's able to do for you. He lets you know that he's there to serve you. Whatever you cannot do in the way of serving yourself in that restaurant, Bob lets you know that he's there to do that. You very well can't get up and go to the back of the kitchen at the restaurant and prepare your food or, or put your food on the plate and bring it out to your table. But Bob, the server, can do that for you. You can't go and... Uh, Go back to the kitchen and get a pitcher of iced tea and come back and fill your tea glass or your drink glass. But Bob, the server, can do that for you. So God is letting Abram know, and ultimately us, in this introduction, what his name and his title is and what he's able to do because of who he is. He lets him know that I am the almighty God. And whatever it is that you cannot do, Abram, if you don't have the might, if you don't have the power, if you don't have the ability to do it, I want you to know that I'm here and I can do it. So there's something in that title, El Shaddai, the Almighty God. That means that he has all might. That's the first thing I want you to know, that his name and his title tells us what he's able to do. The second point that I want to make is that the God of the Holy Bible is the only one that has made this declaration. God comes on the scene and he makes this awesome proclamation, this awesome declaration. He says, I'm the almighty God. I am. 
Now, in my studies and my findings, I have discovered that the Holy Bible itself speaks of at least 39 pagan gods by name. And people worshipped these pagan gods. They had the God of the Son. Well, the Holy Bible tells me that the Almighty God, El Shaddai, is the one that hung the sun in the sky. And not only that, he had the power and the ability and the might to hold the sun still for a certain amount of time so that Joshua could fight the battle of Jericho. They had the God of the sea. Well, the Holy Bible tells me that El Shaddai is the one that caused the seas to come about. He brought the waters together and he made the seas. He also parted the seas. Had the Red Sea stand up like two walls on the side so the children of Israel would be able to walk through on dry land. That's an almighty God right there. He is the one that declared that. And in my studies, looking at the facts and looking at the evidence, I have to come to the conclusion and I have to agree with the Holy with the God of the Holy Bible. He is the Almighty God. Why? Because everything that he said that he was going to do, everything that he said that was going to come to pass, it has happened exactly the way that he said that it would happen. So he's the only one that declared that, and I agree with him tonight. Amen. Here's the third part that I want, the third point that I want to make and bring out. Let's look at the text. He says this. Uh, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, now catch verse four. The almighty God Whatever he says that he's going to do, he has the might and the power and the ability to back it up. He says this in verse four. For as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. And thou shalt be the father of many nations. If he shall be the father of many nations, that means at that particular time, he's not the father of many nations. Thou shall be is future tense. He's not that right now, but he said, Thou shall be the father of many nations. Now, watch this, verse 5. Don't miss this. Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. So, the first thing the Almighty God does, he changes his name from Abram to Abraham. And I told you earlier, there's something in that name, in the title that you're given. Abraham means the father of a great multitude. Well, that wasn't what he was when he was Abram. But now the Almighty has changed his name. Now watch this. Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram, but thou name shall be called Abraham. Now pick up on this, the end of verse 5. For a father of many nations, I have made thee. Uh-oh. Did you, did, did you hear that? Did you catch that? You missed it. Watch this. Look at the end of verse 4 again. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Future tense. The end of verse 5. For I, for a father of many nations, I have made thee. So somewhere between the end of verse 4 and the end of verse 5, the Almighty God has done exactly what he said he was going to do. Because Abraham went from, from thou shalt be at the end of verse 4 to I have made thee at the end of verse 5. That's how powerful the Almighty God is. It doesn't take him long to do what he said he was going to do. Now, when did that happen between verse 4 and verse 5? It happened as soon as it came out of the Almighty's mouth. All he has to do is say it, and it is done. If you blink, you miss it. Let there be light, and there was light. Let the earth bring forth the grass and the trees, and the earth brought forth the grass and the trees. That's how mighty El Shaddai is. He is the almighty God. Once he says it, it is done. Now, what, what we have to do is take our faith and apply it to everything that the Holy Bible says that we can do, that we have, who we are. Take your faith 
and believe the Almighty. Because everything that he says that he can do, he has the power and the might to back it up. Will you believe him today? Will you believe him today? All you have to do is ask him and he will do it. I hope something has been said that will encourage you in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time that you've given us to share in your word. We, we acknowledge that you are the almighty God, the omnipotent God, the all-powerful God. You are El Shaddai. And we bow before you and we walk perfectly before you. We love you, we adore you, and we appreciate you for exactly who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for your time and allow me to shout, share with you, Christian Stronghold. God bless you. God loves you. And I love you too. And there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Good night. <laughs>